والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and may peace and blessings be constantly sent to our last Prophet Muhammad forever. As to what follows, I begin with the greeting words of paradise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity in the month of Ramadan. And we pray that Muslims throughout the world will be able to enjoy this month we pray that Allah would provide for the Muslims the ability to break their fast properly. And if not, we pray that Allah would give us all the patience to understand the importance of imsak, to abstain ourselves, and to follow the methodology given to us by the last Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not speak from himself. He gave us a message from above seven heavens, which came directly from the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so we need to look at the Qur'an and see that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was the living expression of the Qur'an. And when they used to ask Aisha radiallahu anha uh, about the Prophet ﷺ, she would say, if you want to see the Qur'an walking and talking and living, then look at the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So these words give us living expression. It gives us detailed guidance that we can follow in this month and that we can actually uh, uh, learn how to maneuver ourselves while we are in a state of fasting and what will be the rewards that come from out of that maneuvering. Now in this light, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave a, an important hadith and we have heard the beginning uh, of this hadith so many times, it is the hadith Qudsi. I want to read the full hadith. And of course when we say hadith Qudsi, it is a saying um, which is not the Qur'an, it is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is given by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his special way of speaking the Arabic language. And so in this hadith Qudsi, Allah Azza wa Jal has said, all of the actions of the son of Adam are performed, all of the actions performed by the son of Adam are for himself except for fasting, it is for me, and I will reward especially for this. And I am to decide its rewards. Fasting is a shield. So if a person is fasting, he should not engage in foolish behavior, or shouting, or yelling. If someone rebukes him, or fights him, he should not retaliate, but he should say to that person, Inni saw him, Inni saw him. I am fasting, I am fasting. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I swear by the one who holds my soul in his hands, the odor or the smell of the mouth of a person who is fasting is dearer to Allah than the fragrance or the smell of the sweetest musk. And so we learn from this uh, blessed tradition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a special reward for those who are in a state of fasting. And that the Prophet, peace be upon him, has shown us that if we are in a living situation and a person now argues with us, a confrontation develops with another human being, we should not respond to this. But we should maintain our fast and we should say, I'm fasting. I am in a special condition. I am a fasting person. This then gives us the special condition that we are in in this month. Also, the Prophet ﷺ has given us a double reward or an extra reward because normally the smell of a fasting person, that the food in the stomach would come up and then the smell uh, comes from the mouth and it is not an agreeable smell. And we use the miswak. We should not be putting uh, sweet things, uh, sweet uh, types of fragrances down into our jof or into our stomach area. We can rinse our mouth out uh, with water and we use the miswak, but no matter what we do, the smell will still come out. The Prophet ﷺ has informed us that this khuluf, this smell is actually better to Allah than the sweetest 
perfume, the sweetest musk or misk. This is such a great blessing that even something that normally is disagreeable becomes agreeable in the month of Ramadan. And so the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, has given us guidance and has shown us how to act with people inside of this month. In another tradition, and now the Prophet is showing us what is the benefits coming out of this. He said that a person who is fasting has two joys. He has one joy when he breaks his fast, and he has another joy when he meets his Lord, and then he will be happy again. This is reported in Bukhari and Muslim. And so that continuation of the hadith, that beauty that comes from the word of the Prophet ﷺ shows us that a person in a state of fasting will gain in this life and gain in the next life. Surely every single day when we break our fast at the time of iftar, there is a type of joy when that sugar hits the body, when those spices hit the tongue, when the stomach, when the, stomach, when the body is nourished again, there is a happiness that comes over us daily. But the greatest happiness, inshallah, will come when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith reported in Bukhari and Muslim has also informed us there is a gate in paradise called a rayan through which only those who were fasting will be allowed to enter on the day of resurrection. An announcer will say, where are those who used to fast? Accordingly, they will proceed to enter the gate and when they all enter, the gate will be closed behind them. And so fasting is a preference. Fasting will give us, inshallah, the entrance into a rayan, into a special gate only for the believers. And we pray that Allah would give us that chance to be of those who would enter into this gate. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, continued in his blessings to his companions. And when he gave these ahadith, he gave them not only to his followers, but he gave them to Muslims who would read them and live by them until the Day of Judgment. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has said, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan while cherishing his true faith and seeking a confident or having confident expectation in the reward of Allah, all of his sins will be forgiven. He added to this saying in this next riwayah or report, whoever stands to pray the night of Qadr, the night of glory, while having true faith and seeking reward from Allah, will also have all of his sins forgiven. And this is also in Bukhari and Muslim. So we see in these traditions that the month of Ramadan is a time of great blessing. That the month of Ramadan is a time when the believer gains happiness. It is not necessarily a stern time. And it is so strange for people who watch Muslims fasting. You would normally expect that when a person doesn't eat and doesn't drink the whole day, that they will become mean and cranky and uh, they would not enjoy what they are doing. But many Muslims, not all of the Muslims, many of the Muslims actually express joy when the month of Ramadan comes. We know that some of the companions like Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, he used to love to fast on a hot day. He would look forward to a difficult uh, fast to be able to sacrifice himself for the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so Ramadan is that time when the, when the ummah gains happiness in this world. As time goes every day, and if you look at the different time zones, as sun sets, people are breaking their fast. So we can say, in one time zone in Europe, there is happiness. And also in the western part of Africa, West Africa, in that time zone, there is happiness. It, grows, it goes across the Atlantic Ocean. It reaches the eastern seaboard of America. Happiness comes to the believers. It goes to the central zone. Happiness comes to the believers. It goes to the western zone and into the Pacific Ocean. Happiness is coming to believers in Hawaii and the islands of the Pacific. It goes now to Japan, to Korea, to the Philippines. Happiness comes to the believers. It goes into China, to Mongolia, 
and down in that time zone into Southeast Asia, happiness comes to the believers. It goes then uh, to India, to Tibet, happiness comes to the believers. It goes over to Pakistan, comes into Turkey, into the Middle East, happiness comes to the believers. It goes then into Africa, happiness comes to the believers. All over the world, at the different times, joy is coming to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu just for the simple act of breaking the fast. Look at the mercy that is involved in that. And so people even who are depressed about their lives and they fast, gain happiness just by the iftar. And if we can give an iftar to another person, if we can invite in people who do not have as much as us, then we can be giving joy to other members of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu If we could take our wealth and then find a section of the city where there are needy Muslims, give it to them, make them happy, make their faces light up when they eat the beautiful dates, make their faces light up when they have nice uh, cool drinks and when they are eating healthy food, make their faces light up when they have enough to last them through the evening and to begin their next day. That is what the Ummah is. We are all blessed with happiness and so we should share that happiness amongst ourselves. But not only that, we can take it a step further. We will be blessed, inshallah, with an entrance into paradise. And when they enter, enter into paradise, it is said, Khalidina fiha abadan. They will live inside of it forever. There are sounds that nobody has heard. There are tastes that nobody has ever tasted. There are sights that nobody has ever seen. And inshallah, it is said that the believers, at some point, if they are blessed, they even come into the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the highest joy, to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the mercy within this month, that through this, we are able to enter into paradise. It is a special place, Bab al Rayyan. And so the Prophet Sallallahu gave us this Bushra. He gave us glad tidings of blessings in this world and blessings in the hereafter. All we have to do is follow his words. Be sincere. Let our Iman be al qawlu bil lisan. We say it with our tongues. Wat tasdiq bil qalb. We confirm it in our hearts. Wal amal bil jawarih and we practice with our limbs. So in this case, we say, Inni sa'im. I am a fasting person. Our hearts should confirm this statement. And our limbs should confirm what we have said and what we have believed in. We carry it out. We follow the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We stay away from food. We stay away from drinks. We stay away from sexual activities. We purify our mouths and our lives. And inshallah, we gain happiness in this life and the next. I leave you with these thoughts. And I ask Allah to bless you and me. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.